Welcome back ACPS staff. In this second video in our series on using WeVideo for instructional videos, we're going to focus on the menu across the top to import, record, and narrate your own media. And then we're going to touch on some of the additional options in the menu on the left hand side to add media from WeVideo. Then we're also going to look at options to edit the media clips that you're adding to your project. So let's go ahead and get started with the option to import. When I I select on import I have the option here to select to browse which is going to give me the ability to pull in media from uh, my desktop my documents folder downloads even an external USB drive my additional options are to choose from what we video calls the social sites which allows me to import media from my Google Drive or OneDrive here. The media that you can bring in is the same media that we have already seen as options to use when you are working here inside of WeVideo. Not only can I bring in images, but I can bring in videos as well. So I've found an image that I have saved in my downloads folder. I'm going to select to open that and it's going to add that up here in my uh, preview window. Once it has finished processing, if I want to add this to the project that I'm creating, I can simply drag it down and once again set it into video track one. I can also change the order of these simply by dragging and dropping. And then it's going to ask me if I want to insert it in between these two clips and push the second one into the third position. And that is exactly what I want to do. So I'm going to select that option at the bottom that says insert and push. My other option would be to replace that second clip, but I don't want it. I want all three. So I'm just going to choose that insert and push. So simple drag and drop allows you to change the order of your clips as you add additional media. So that is importing in an image. It will land in your media area up here in the upper left hand corner and then you'll need to drag it down to the project and put it in exactly the place that you want to add that. Our next option is record. When you select on record you get even more options. You can record your webcam which would be a video of you presenting to your audience. You can present your screen and that would be uh, you presenting from something like a PowerPoint, Google Slides, maybe you've got a Nearpod or a Lumio lesson. That would all be captured and you would be able to present that to your audience. Our third option for recording is screen and webcam. This is going to give us sort of a picture in picture uh, effect with our recording. It's going to capture what's on my screen, but it's also going to capture me. So it's a nice way to kind of personalize your instructional videos. You're focusing on the content, you're focusing on the lesson, the presentation that you had created, but you're also present in your video. So I'm going to go ahead and select that third option, the screen and webcam, and choose next. If this is the first time that you are recording in WeVideo, it is going to ask you, ask you to allow both your uh, webcam and your microphone. As I've done recordings here before, it is not asking me that, but please look for that option and make sure that you allow those um, if you are presented with that question. So here it's giving me some options to choose the camera and microphone that I want to record. I only have one webcam, that's the default one that's built into the laptop available for me right now, and it is set to record from the microphone on my headset and that's perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and select next and now it's giving me the option to choose what I want to record from my screen. Uh, as we've come to expect if you've used Google Meet you can choose an individual tab, you can also choose the entire window which would allow you to move between applications and you can even choose your entire screen which would allow you to bring up anything on your computer and have whatever you're currently seeing be captured for your students. So I'm just going to go ahead and choose that entire screen so that we can get a variety of things captured in this recording. And now I'm going to choose share and share is your record button. As soon as you click on that, it is going to start recording. So you need to make sure that you are ready to go. So I'm going to click on share and now it's giving me my countdown. 
And here we are recording, and once again, you're seeing me captured in the webcam, but you're also seeing whatever is presented on my screen. So if I return to that document that I shared in the first video about recommended equipment, I'm talking about this, you're seeing this, I can go back to my ClassLink page and talk about the different apps that are on ClassLink, and whatever I'm seeing on my screen is what you guys are seeing as a part of this video recording, in addition to my lovely webcam capturing me to personalize the video. Video. When I am done with my recording, I have a button here at the very top of my uh, very bottom, excuse me, of my screen that says stop sharing and that is going to end my recording. Now I can return here to Wii Video and I have a preview window. It shows me the two thumbnails side by side of what I captured in that video. I can click to play them back to make sure that I'm happy with them. If I'm not happy with it, I can choose record again, which is going to trash what I created a moment ago and start over, or I can choose save if I'm happy with it. Now, if I choose save, not only does it add it up here in my media bin where I'm seeing all the different clips that I'm adding to this project, but it also immediately drops it down here into the project area. And this is where we see that picture in picture effect. So it put my presentation screen, what was on my computer, on my laptop, here in video track one, but it put the video of me up here in the track that they call text one. And you can see over here on the player that it even put it very small, in the upper right hand corner. So the video of me is small and less prominent. The screen capture of what is on my uh, laptop is much larger. It fills the entire screen. Let's turn our attention to our final option here for recording and adding our own media, and that is the ability to narrate. One of the things that I want to point out to you, if we return to that stock footage that I got from Wii Video and I click play again, you'll see as we're panning across this hillside that we don't hear anything. There is no audio included in the stock video or image footage that we video has available for us and of course it's not in that image that I uploaded. If we move forward in my video to where I recorded uh, my screen capture and webcam, we do have audio added to this because I was talking as a part of my recording there. So narration is a great way to use WeVideo's stock media, but also narrate over top of it. So if I put my playhead back at the very beginning here, and then I choose my narrate, I can narrate over those first few seconds of my video that is currently silent and maybe not very engaging for my audience. Because I'm only recording audio, it just wants to check my microphone, and when I'm ready, I can click Start and choose Record. Once again, it's going to give me that three-second countdown so I know exactly when I want to get started. And now I can be talking about the fall and why it's my favorite season and how much I love visiting this particular location with my family. And now we get this irrelevant picture that I just dropped in the middle here before we switch over to looking up at the sunshine shining down through the trees. Uh, beautiful fall foliage. Once again, I have the ability to preview that recording, and if I'm happy with it, I can click Save. If I'm not happy with it, I can click Record again to start over. So I'm going to go ahead and click Save, and it's going to add this up here in my Project Bin area where it is including all the other media. But it has also added another track down here at the bottom of the current project that I'm recording called VoiceOver. Now, I want to jump to exactly this point in my video here and point something out to you. I'm going to go ahead and click play on my player. And you may notice that for just a second there, we're getting 
twice the audio. We're listening to the audio where I was running just a little bit long on talking about the fall foliage while we were looking at this still image before I got into the clip of me recording. So let's talk about how I can fix something like this. One of my options is to simply drag this track out and make it just a little bit longer. So I'm going to bump these two over just a little bit. I'm just clicking on them and dragging them. And now I'm going to select on this image and I'm going to get right over that right hand edge and I'm going to drag it out so that it actually stays on the screen just a little bit longer. It stays on the screen until I finish talking about what's included in that image. Now that I've adjusted that, I'm going to slide this back over and bump it right up against it. So now I'm no longer talking over myself. Instead, I have the ability to end the first narration before the second narration begins. So one option you can do with those image clips is just to change the timestamp or how long they remain on the screen by simply dragging that right hand edge to make it longer or shorter and that can be a great way to line it up with your audio if you recorded a little longer or a little less time than you had intended to add that uh, over top of an image project there. Let's turn our attention back up to our menu here. We've mentioned the project bin a few times. This area here on the left hand side where we are seeing thumbnails of our current media is what's known as the project bin. Every single piece of media that I am including in the current project is added to my project bin. And what that means is if I decide to do something like select on this still image and maybe delete it. So I'm going to select delete. And I've decided to remove that. I, I don't like it. It doesn't really fit what's going on in my video here. So I'm going to move these over. If I decide later that I want it back, it is here in my project bin because previously it was included in uh, the project that I was creating. So I can easily bring it back down and add it somewhere into my project at another time. So your project bin is always going to be housing all of the media that you used at some point in this project that you're creating. One last menu option that we're going to talk about in this particular video, and that is the uploads option here. Uploads not only houses what is in your media bin if you added it from your own media, but it also has every video that you have ever used inside of Wii Video. You can see that as I scroll down, I'm finding all kinds of stuff. So it is always collecting up my stuff here in the uploads, which makes it very easy and convenient for me to reuse anything that I want to in a future project because it's all housed here in my Wii Video account. So we'll stop there for this particular video. Join me in our third video where we're going to get into the specifics of editing some of the content that we've already added to a project. So I can edit videos, I can edit images, and so on. So we're going to turn our attention to some of those editing options in our next video. See you back in a little bit.